Greetings, one and all two universes. In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or in a video response. And who knows, your comment or your video response could be featured in the next episode. With all that said, let's meet our two fighters, Spike, the monkey catcher, and Toon Link, the hero of winds. Quite a... Quite a difference in occupations there. Anyways, remember, this is Toon Link from Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass, not the one you see in Majora's Mask or Ocarina of Time. It wouldn't make sense to composite them since they're technically all different people anyways. Also, it means I'll get to use Link more often. <laughs> oh yeah, but uh, Spike's there too, I guess. This is Universes. Monkeys are cute little troublemakers. They'll take your food, your cameras, and throw poop at you. Yeah, they're pretty harmless. Sometimes. Apes, on the other hand, albino ones especially, will steal the helmet of a genius scientist that enhances the mental capabilities to their peak point and use their newfound intelligence to send monkeys back in time in order to rewrite history and take over the world. Ugh, come on, Spectre. You know albinos are incapable of taking over the world? Just look at Pinky in the brain. And me. But that's besides the point. Whenever these apes do attempt their little scheme, there's always a spiky-haired boy with a butterfly net to stop them. And this is where Spike comes in. He was accidentally sent back in time with the apes, which fortunately gave him the chance to save the day by catching them all with a wide arsenal of gadgets. And we'd better save time and get to that now, because when it comes to Spike's gadgets, we have a lot to cover. His first and primary weapon is the Time Net. This little gadget lets him take down monkeys in one shot by sending them back to the time station. And yes, it works on people too. Next is the Stun Club. It's used to slow down monkeys if they're causing any trouble, but it's good for taking down enemies too. Spike can also dual wield them and equip them with fire, ice, and lightning attributes. He can even extend their length to take down gigantic swarms of foes. If a monkey is too fast to catch in the Time Net, or hit with the stun club, Spike can always dash towards them with the super hoop. Spinning it around his hips lets him run at high speeds and ram into monkeys. Fancy roller skates help with his movement too. He has a slingshot called the slingback shooter which can fire little pellets, homing darts, or even little mini bombs. The ammo for this gadget can also be infused with fire, lightning, or ice attributes. The sky flyer lets him reach high cliffs or glide across long gaps. The magic punch allows him to land even stronger blows that can destroy solid steel walls. He has little killer bee robots that can float around him and target the enemy. And last but not least, Spike has a weapon that turns the opponent into a gigantic target for an automatic satellite ray. Spike is stealthy enough to sneak up on monkeys completely undetected. Considering monkeys can hear as well as humans, maybe even an octave higher, this is pretty impressive. Many of his gadgets like the slingback shooter and magic punch can be used to take down gigantic robots, tanks, or even UFOs. His super hoop allows him to outrun lasers, missiles, and bullets from monkeys and enemies. He's able to mentally overpower Spectre who can control hundreds of monkeys at once and his satellite ray is able to shoot up into space, bounce off a satellite, and make it back down to Earth in 10 seconds at massively hypersonic speeds to destroy an island-sized alien base. Wait, aliens? Yeah, things got pretty weird. The point is, he catches monkeys and wipes out alien races. You know, normal anime boy stuff. One thing's for certain though, if any animals escape from your local zoo, you know who to call. Now let's see what the Hero of Winds has in his arsenal to combat this monkey catcher. Isn't the true strength. <laughs> the voice acting! <laughs> you know that angry feeling you get when you think you killed a fly, but it just keeps coming back again and again, and eventually you get so tired that you just fumigate your house? Well, that's basically what happened to the land of Hyrule. Many generations ago, the Hero of Time had defeated the evil Ganondorf and sealed him away. Eventually, though, this pesky little fly was on his way back. However, since the Hero of Time didn't return, people began to grow fearful. So what was the easiest solution? Flood the entire land of Hyrule to split it up into islands so it'd be literally impossible to take over all of it. Everything seemed cool for a bit, but some silly little flood wasn't gonna stop Ganondorf. He was more determined than ever and returned to hunt for the Triforce pieces, causing another incarnation of Link and Zelda to be born, ready to challenge him. This little chibi incarnation of Link is known as Toon Link, and of course he'd live up to the legend with his impressive arsenal. Of course his most iconic weapon, the one used by most incarnations of Link, is the Master Sword. It's a blade infused with the power to repel evil, and it's been used to defeat Ganondorf and seal him away time and time and again. He also has a handy shield or two. One of them, the Mirror Shield to be specific, can reflect light. 
He also has a little thing called the Wind Waker. It allows him to control the winds themselves and warp to different places in a cyclone. He has bombs that can blow up large rocks and destroy parts of walls, arrows with light, fire and ice variations, and a boomerang that can lock onto targets. He has an item called the Hookshot, which works like a grappling hook, allowing him to grab items from afar or reach high places. He has magic armor that can make him temporarily invincible until his magic bar runs empty, and another Zelda standard he has is a Bomb Chew, a bomb that skids across the ground into enemies. He can hold a limited supply of potions and fairies that refill his health and magic. And he does have an hourglass that can stop time temporarily, but he needs a phantom sphere to use it. But that's just one item out of his gigantic arsenal. He still performs quite a few amazing feats without it. I mean, Link himself is strong enough to carry around gigantic stones several times larger than his own body. These things have been calculated to weigh at least 17.3 tons, and Link can throw them so hard that they crumble to dust when they land. He's able to stealthily sneak into the Forsaken Fortress after being launched hundreds of feet away inside a barrel straight into it. Now that's gotta leave a mark. He's powerful enough to defeat Ganondorf, whose magic is strong enough to affect the entire land of Hyrule. And he's quick enough to outpace Ganondorf, who can dodge point-blank light arrows. Link is a quick-thinking strategist who can solve his way out of any problem. He's sailed the Great Sea, defeating all kinds of monsters. A big evil flower, a floating pair of hands... Whatever kind of beast rears its ugly head, Toon Link is there to stop it. But let's see if Link can stop monkeying around long enough to avoid being caught by the monkey catcher. Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Results. Corn O'Keefe here, folks. Bring you my next universe's prediction. You can obviously see Spike from Ape Escape versus Toon Link from Legend of Zelda. The boy who always appears as he's smiling, but on occasion he frowns at you. He's a badass in his own right. He hops around catching apes, and, you know, he's pr he has a lot of stamina. That's for sure. A lot of stamina, for sure. Then you got Toon Link. Toon Link's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Carries, like, bombs, you know, has an amazing sword. Pretty crafty in his own right. Pretty freaking crafty, folks. I mean... He's pretty, he's also got a lot of stamina in his own right. I don't think he has as much stamina as our boy Spike over here. But all together, folks, I'm going with Toon Link. Simple fact, I think he has more to offer. I think he has more in his arsenal. And I think he has a little more experience as far as that goes. But, as always, have a blessed day. Shout out to Leopold the Brave, one of the best series on YouTube. Have a blessed day. Corn O'Keefe out. Peace. Hey guys, Brandon Gaming EVA here with a new universe's prediction. Now, today we have a very interesting fight. It is Toon Link from the Legend of Zelda series versus Spike from Ape Escape. Now, I have done a little bit of back and forth with this, even when it was um, going to be a fictional fight, but I think I've come with my final conclusive answer. Now, Toon Link is an extremely powerful opponent. He has tons of great weapons. He is pretty um pretty brave he yeah he's overall a really strong hero but i'm gonna have to give it a spike for a few reasons one there's a pretty big difference in speed between the two toon link has only kept up with ganondorf who can dodge light arrows pointed to the back of his head which is pretty impressive but they're fired off by zelda and zelda while experience with a bow isn't the best marksman when compared to other um fictional marksmen so that's one thing to account. While Spike, he has um, dodged and reacted to lasers being fired from outer space. So that gives him the speed advantage. Not to mention, he also has many satellites and guns that can um, that can attack Toon Link from many different directions. From outer space, from the long range, he has, uh, he has more range in this fight. And while his weapons aren't as lethal as Toon Link, they're more for... Um, a non-lethal form of combat like capturing people with nets he also has um, these laser swords which are also he's also pretty crafty with in combat not to mention he also has a boomerang like toon link he's got a slingshot basically a lot of their arsenal are pretty good counters for one another but i feel like spike's range advantage also gives him a pretty good um pretty good head in this fight not to mention uh toon link is mostly self-taught he's had some um, influence from the goddesses, uh, giving him a little more exper uh, training, 
But overall, Spike has been um, trained pretty well with his gadgets as well. He knows how to use his gadgets in any scenario and has helped him power through some incredible stuff. So I'm going to have to give it a Spike for this Universus and yeah, we'll see what comes out on top. And the results are in. The winner is... Spike! And in complete contrast to last episode, the predictions weren't close at all. Toon Link got the popular vote, sure, but the true deserving winner got their rightful throne. Mostly because Spike is vastly less known than Toon Link, but I digress. Let's get into these results. Now the biggest argument people tried to make is Spike loses because his gear is mostly meant for catching monkeys. Well, you're not wrong in it being meant to catch monkeys, but that still doesn't change the fact that these gadgets are strong enough to destroy solid steel walls, tanks, UFOs, and an entire alien base. You know, Batman's arsenal is designed to be non-lethal, but it could still potentially kill. An item's main purpose is not its only purpose, similar to how Link's Master Sword is used to repel evil, but that still doesn't change the fact that it can cut things like any other sword. In fact, the Master Sword is a perfect explanation of Spike's lead and strength as well. Sure, Ganondorf is country level, but that's through his magical strength and how it can affect the entire land of Hyrule, not anything physical that Toon Link can scale to. Meanwhile, Spike's feats are all his own. Plus, the Master Sword is Ganondorf's natural weakness anyways. It'd be like scaling the Superman for killing him with Kryptonite. It wouldn't make sense. Master Sword aside, though, Spike's arsenal is more useful anyways. The super hoop that can outrun lasers and missiles, the homing darts and exploding mini-bombs from the slingback shooter, and the gigantic target you can turn your enemy into to for the satellite ray. Don't get me wrong, Link's arsenal is plenty useful for the situations that he's thrown into, but Spike has gotten through worse. Toon Link has the ability to switch through items pretty quickly, but that still doesn't change the fact that he can only use one at a time. Spike has the ability to overwhelm and handle being overwhelmed. While Toon Link could throw a bomb and then shoot arrows while waiting for the bomb to explode, Spike could ride around on roller skates with two stun clubs in his hands, killer bees on either side shooting at Link, all while waiting for the satellite ray to come down and blast Link to pieces. Now of course, Link could deflect some shots with the mirror shield, but not so many at once coming from all sides. Not to mention the satellite beam only takes a couple seconds to make it back to Earth after bouncing off the satellite. That's a massively hypersonic feat that Toon Link hasn't even come close to reacting to. Even if Link somehow managed to dodge it once, Spike could just do it again and again until it works. And that brings us to another point. Link has limited bombs, limited arrows, and a limited supply of potions and fairies. They'd only be temporary solutions and do nothing but delay the inevitable. Spike has unlimited shots with his slingback shooter, he can immediately use the super hoop again after it stops, and all of his other gadgets have little to no cooldown. His arsenal is just stronger, faster, and more convenient to use. Against someone like Spike, Toon Link wouldn't be able to catch a break. The winner is Spike. Yes! Get ready for the next battle. Bonk! Yes! <laughs>